Well today we're fishing two miles north of Lundy Island in the Bristol Channel. We're targeting the squid fishery. We love this time of year, obviously the sun's out, flat calm weather. Good hauls of squid. The boys are happy to work hard for a good return. So. Yeah, I love fishing, I loved it all my life. I think it's always the anticipation of never knowing what you're gonna catch. You never do know what you, each day, each haul, each year's gonna bring in. I'm a third generation fisherman. My father and my uncle were trawlermen. Obviously as a kiddie, summer holidays, like you, you pick up and you go out with them and you get the bug, and the bug never goes. Looking good. Here they come. Come on, you squiddly diddlies. <laughs> right back there, Tom. And Tom's with been me since he was about 11 years old. Oh, are you 26? 28 this year. 28. He's our own little George Clooney. Got a good lad, you can't do it without the boys, you know, you've got to have a good team behind you. And for the that when you play it. <laughs> well, the squid, when it's landed on board, it's collected, it's all picked up and washed and put away in the ice room there in the fish room within about 30 minutes. We go squid fishing from June till the end of August. After the squid finishes, we uh, go back and target the rays. Yeah, the North Devon trawlers created a ray box six mile north of Lundy a natural conservation zone. It's a non-take zone, we've closed it down for a few months of the year to, to let the ray rest and, and breed and do its, do its business. We've done several things to try and make a sustainable fishery, i.e. ray boxes, bigger foot ropes, to let the juvenile fish pass underneath. At the end of the day, you want a future in the job, you've got to look after it. We'll drop all our, our mixed fish off to uh, S&P Fish Shop in Ilfracum Harbour. There's a box of gurnadale up for you, nice gurnadale. Yeah, no, I, yeah, that, everyone's buying that for barbecue. Are they? Yeah, because it goes on hold, doesn't it? Price just gone up. Price has gone up, Tom. <laughs> Price has just gone up. If the boat comes in in daylight, one of us will go down and collect our fish. But if it's in the middle of the night, I do a deal with Paul. I get his shop in and he drops off my fish. Yeah, most of our catch goes to Biddeford Fisheries. We're trying to get Ray back on the supermarket shelves and uh, a good price for our Rays would make a good, stable future for the North Devon fishermen. Plenty of ice for your gin and tonic. Got some John Dory, some Gurnards. I think there's some lemon sole in here. Keep Claire happy. It's a bit of squid for her as well. Leave Claire a little surprise with a couple of nice Gurnards looking at her for the morning, I think. A little smile on their face for her. <laughs> Claire's got the shopping ready to go again. Okie dokies. Right, turn around and do it all again. We've only been in for about an hour. Been away for four and a half days now. You really have got to keep pushing on to make this work. These things aren't cheap to run. They're the best part of 800 pounds for 24 hours before the boys get a penny. They get paid share of catch, 40 to the crew, 60 to the boat. We could make a plan to go in tonight and say we're having a couple of days off. I'll get home, pick up the phone within an hour and say, sorry lads, we're off again in the morning and bang goes their plans. Weekend barbecues, kiddies parties. With this job you're at sea 24-7. It's just a struggle this year. And that's not down to the lack of fish though, is it? We've had the, the best hauls array in this channel ever. The price this year has been, it, it's just been the worst. Fishing's what we know and love, but the way it's going with quotas and prices and uh, discard bans, there is options that we could diversify into the offshore work, delivering technicians and uh, fuel to the wind farms. Yeah, I'd rather be fishing, but then when it's blowing and it's windy and it's miserable and you're earning nothing, you think, well, why don't I stay home with the kids? The reason I go to wind farm is just, while my daughter's young, I want to watch her grow up, you know, she could be my only child. With the offshore work, they work a rotor where they've got two weeks on, two weeks off, and they can make plans in their life, which they've never been able to do, you know? Well, I would never give up fishing completely, ever. I reckon when I'm like 60 years old, I'd just jump back into fishing. Once you start, you can't stop. Your heart's in fishing, and I think it always will be, but um, we'll just have to see, see how it pans out. Days like today when you're catching squid, it's what dreams are made of, isn't it?